We teach our children about the wise man and the foolish man, and we sing a little song at Vacation Bible School about building your house on the rock and how that the wise man built his house on the rock and the foolish man built his house upon the sand. Well, Jesus taught a great lesson in giving us that information. The difference between the two is that the wise man heard and he did God's word, whereas the foolish man only heard, and yet he failed to do, he failed to put into practice what the Lord would have him to do. We all want to be people of wisdom, and as, as I was thinking about that, I wanted to reiterate that point, and then I just wanted to follow up by saying, we heard tonight from Jesus. We heard his words as we read Matthew 7, words of inspiration recorded in scripture for us. We heard that lesson again, that message that we have taught so often to our children. But if there is something that I need to change, something that you need to change, something that we haven't done that we need to do, what are we going to do about that what are we going to do do is the key word of the lesson tonight It's the key word of Matthew 7 24 through 27 we might think well this was just an average Wednesday night we came together for midweek Bible study we did that's a wonderful opportunity to come together and study God's Word but we don't need to take the Lord's words for granted if there is something that we need to change, we need to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Why? Because the house of the foolish man, it fell as pictured in Matthew 7, and great was the fall of it. It may be that a foolish man's house falls in this life because those who do God's word for the most part, by and large, have a better quality of life, have a better life in general. The commandments that God gives us are commands that are for our good. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. All of those Old Testament commandments were commandments that were given for the benefit and the good of the people of Israel. And God still gives us commands and His Word that as we follow, we'll have a better life than we would otherwise. It's always better to be a doer of God's Word. The one who fails to do God's Word may fall due to the weight of the burdens of this life. We're all going to have trying times. And the one who builds his house upon the sand has no foundation. So when the floods come and the winds begin to blow, the wise of the foolish man falls. But whether one's house falls in this life or not, I know that on the final day of accounting, the house of the foolish man will crumble. It will fall and great will be the fall of it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Notice how Paul, in describing the judgment scene, uses the word done, and he says that we're, we're going to be judged by the things that we've done, good or bad. So we want to be doers of things that are good. We want to do God's Word so that when that day comes, we'll be prepared. On the final day of accounting, there will be a great separation. We might think of it in terms of sheep and goats, we could also think in terms of wise versus the foolish. The wise will be those who will have heard and done God's will, and the foolish those who heard perhaps and did not. And the Lord will say, These shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Matthew 25, 46. So we want to be on that occasion among the wise. But every day we're deciding where we will be at the judgment scene. Whether we'll be among the wise or the foolish, we're deciding every day by 
how we respond to God's word, whether we receive it and apply it to our lives or we simply hear it and neglect to do it. We're going to sing a song of invitation tonight. If you've never obeyed the gospel more than anything, you need to be a doer of God's word tonight. You need to put your faith in Jesus as the Son of God, Acts 8, 37. You need to turn from sin and repentance because this is God's will and commandment, Acts 17, verse 30. Confess your faith in Christ, Romans 10 and verse 10, and then be baptized for the remission of your sins, Acts 2.38. You'll be a Christian added to the Lord's church. And this is God's will for your life. Please do that while you have the time and opportunity. If you need to come home as an erring child of God, do what you know is right. Do what you know in turning from sin and the Lord will forgive. He will abundantly pardon, Isaiah 55 and verse 7. As we sing the song of invitation, if you need to come, do so as we stand and sing.